Hello everyone! So during this video I want to touch upon a very quick subject regarding the Seminar Informs application creation process. More specifically I'm going to talk about what you can do with this progress bar in the case of iOS, how you can modify its looks. So I have right here a progress bar defined on one of my pages. And this progress bar right now it has a background color, it has a margin, and it has a progress that is bound to some other element in, in the view model. But that's not important. The important thing here is that there is no way to change the foreground color. The only color that I can apply right here from SAML is the background color, which right here is set to a white color, light color. Let me remove the progress for a second in here. Notice very uh, tiny progress bar right there. It has a light uh, white background. So this background is the one that is displayed as long as the bar is not filled. But like I said, there's no way to change this foreground that we have in here. This is the default blue color that we see on the default iOS applications. In my case, I also want to change the height because this is too small for me. So there are a couple of things that we need to do in here and it's going to be very straightforward, but we will have to make our own custom render. If you already know how to create custom renders, then you are going to be very familiar with the process. But do not worry, it's actually going to be very straightforward and I will try to explain this as straightforward as possible. The thing that we have to do is navigate to our iOS project. Inside of my iOS project, I have already created a custom renders folder. This is optional, but I do recommend that you have a folder that is named, maybe not exactly custom renders, but something similar. And in here I have created a new C Sharp class, just like I would create any C Sharp class ever. And what I have in here is a class that is called custom progress bar renderer that is the one that should custom the way any progress bar on my application is rendered. And it is going to be inheriting from the progress bar renderer class. So nothing fancy, nothing weird in here so far. I am just inheriting from this other class. By inheriting from this class, I will have access to many different elements, but there are two that I want to override in here. The first one is the on element changed method. Notice that I am overriding it right here. If you have no idea how to override a method, well, actually, because we are already inheriting from a class, we can just write override. And the list of all of the methods that we can override and properties that we can override is going to be listed in here. All you have to do then is search for the on element change method and it's going to create this method that I have in here without this line of code. I am going to add this line of code, but you will see this line added by overriding this method. And the only thing that I have to do in here is set the controls progress tint color. That is the property that will allow us to set what color is going to be in the progress bar, you know, the progress of this bar. Not the, not the background, but what we would call the foreground of this control. And there are many ways in which you can assign a color to this. Nothing that, notice that the type of this element is UI color. The thing that I'm doing in here is from the color class, which you will have to, by the way, add a using directive to summarine.forms to be able to access this class, has a from hex method. And all I'm doing here is passing at the hexadecimal value of the color that I want. There is also a from RGB, so you can pass the red, green, blue channels for the color that you want. And finally, transform this color into a UI color, which is the type that iOS uses. So there is an easy method, the two UI color method that does this for you. So that's it. With this, you will now have a custom render, or not exactly, but this is the line that will be able to change the foreground for your progress bar. 
And then since I want to change the height of my progress bar, I will also have to override the layout subviews method in the same way that I would override any other method. And by default, I am only going to have this first line, the one that is calling the base method from the parent class. What I will do in here is define the hex and the y of what my progress bar or my layout in this case is going to look like. And right here, it's the y that is important because it's the one that will allow me to set the height for my progress bar, which I am currently setting to four. And the next thing that I have to define is a, G, a CG affine transform variable that is the one that is going to define the scale. So here's what, how it's going to work. The X is going to define the scale of the width of the normal progress bar. So I am not going to be scaling it. It's going to be one, which is just 100%. It's going to be 100% the way it is, so nothing changes. But I am going to be scaling it in the Y coordinates, its height. It's going to be four times as tall as it normally is. So this is a transform that I want to set. And finally, to this, actually uh, there's no need to have that keyword there, to the transform of the custom progress bar renderer, which is a type that is inherited from the progress bar renderer. This transform property comes from that class. I am going to assign this new variable, this CG affine transform. And this is how I'm going to be able to modify the scaling of my progress bar. So it is four times as tall. And finally, to this entire namespace, I am going to grind this weird line of code. This is the one that will allow my summary forms application to use this custom render when having one of these types. So here's what's going on. I am setting an assembly, sure thing, something weird. But here in the export renderer, I have to set the type of the element, the summary forms element, that will be using this renderer. So I am so I am telling summary forms in here that to the progress bar, the elements that have this type, I am going to be using this custom renderer, which notices the exact same type as the class that I have just created. So now any progress bar that I define is going to be using the custom progress bar renderer, well, to be rendered. And that's everything that I need to do. In fact, right here, I have the summary forms previewer open, which means that if I rebuild my projects, I will be able to see the renderer in action. So I am going to first render, uh, build my iOS project. So this new type is recognized and the assembly is recognized and everything. And as soon as it's ready, I will head back to the summary forms previewer and see the result. As soon as the build for my iOS project is ready, I will also build my shared libraries project. And again, wait just a couple of seconds until it's ready. And you see how the renderer is initializing itself again. So we see here in the summary forms previewer, initializing renderer. And after a few seconds, once the renderer has been initialized, you can see how now the foreground or the color for the progress is the color that I said, which is a different blue, and that the height of this element is taller, actually four times taller. So there you go. This is it was for us to have this custom progress bar defined on iOS. As always, if you learned something from the video, feel free to comment wherever this video is on LinkedIn, YouTube, etc. And most importantly, this is only a brief look at what you can do with Xamarin. If you want to learn more about Xamarin, I do have a course that I will link somewhere again, wherever this is. So feel free to check it out and maybe you find it interesting. You will be able to enroll with a very huge discount just for you.